Da. This is the uniform, it seems to, to be all over the world, the dark suit. The dark suit. And these people are promoted, prime ministers, presidents, as being the leaders of the world, the people who are making the decisions. If anyone thinks Bush has been running America, I've got some seafront property in Switzerland you might like to look at. <laughs> I've got a picture. <laughs> the dark suits are the here today, gone tomorrow politicians who are the vehicles for introducing the agenda decided in the shadows and those shadow people do not change or at least those that control the shadow people do not change as they say in America those enormous numbers of people in America are now starting to understand this they say Where, whoever you vote for the government still gets in and what they mean by that is those that control governments of any persuasion get in in the shadows this is where it's done Look for the think tanks, which is a massive vehicle for this manipulation in the background. These people are cardboard cutouts. They do a job for a while. Some of them know they're doing a job in relation to the shadow people. Lots of them don't. They're just manipulated to bring in certain policies by the networks around them. I mean, have you met a lot of these people? You know? Not a lot of brain cell activity in some of these politicians, right? Piece of cake to use them to bring things through. What has Bush done for the last nearly eight years? Signed things. Doesn't decided what's being signed, he's just bloody signed it. Now, because of people like me and other people all across the internet and, and through other means, books and stuff, it's, and uh, never mind that, daily experience now, it's becoming clearer and more obvious that there is a elite that is deciding the direction that this world and our lives is going. And one of those insiders on the peripheral of the inside, David uh, Rothkop, wrote this book recently, it's called Superclass. He is a scholar at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, a think tank in America that was exposed by a congressional investigation in the 50s uh, by uh, something called the Reese uh, Committee. Uh, it was exposed, this international peace organization was exposed for manipulating war, particularly the First World War, and they got that from the minutes of the organization. He's also a former director of a notorious organization that's in my books right the way through called Kissinger Associates which was set up by Henry Kissinger um, along with a co-founder called Lord Carrington you might have heard of foreign secretary at the time of the Falklands War in this country in the Thatcher administration but what he says having you know fallback position we can't keep denying it fallback position yes an elite is deciding the, the direction of the world but it's kind of a loose thing and it's just kinda of happening <laughs> bullshit <laughs> it's coldly calculated if you go high enough and I get into that so this is where the action is behind the scenes and it's a network of bloodlines. I can't go into this too much because of time. I want to focus on what this election is about, but just a little bit of background. There were bloodlines um, out of the ancient world. They were the royal bloodlines. They were considered special and all the rest of it that came out of the ancient world, which are overwhelmingly pulling the strings within this elite, some of the ancient uh, advanced civilizations, but particularly one keeps coming to light what we once called Sumer which historians call the cradle of civilization uh, I would question that but that's what they say and later it was called Babylon now this land is of great historical significance to this network of interbreeding bloodlines and it is called today Iraq Yes, the Iraq thing was about oil, but not only. Yes, it was about many things. 
but not only. But it was also about the historical significance of this land known as Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, in terms of the people who were orchestrating the invasion of Iraq. And these bloodlines moved out, became the, the force behind the Roman Empire, moved up into northern Europe, became the um, aristocracy of, 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 and uh, royal bloodlines of Europe. And when people started then, the people in general, started resisting this ov overt, in-your-face royal dictatorship, where they could see where the control was, these, started, these bloodlines started moving, still some stayed in the, in the official royal uh, state, but most of them moved out of that into what I call the dark suit professions. This is why when you, when you look at the genealogy uh, of, the, of American presidents since Washington, which has been done by people like the Boston Historical Genealogical Society and stuff, the number of presidents that lock in to the royal and aristocratic establishment of Europe is um, staggering. In a la the land where anyone could become president. What's that? More bullshit, thank you very much. <laughs> the real expansion of this network came with what we called colonial rule. Where the British Empire, what did they say? They said the, 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 uh, the sun never set on the British Empire, so big was it. But not just the British Empire, that was the prime one, mind. Also the French and, and others. And these bloodlines were exported all over the world as these European powers colonized the world. And then we had this sleight of hand called independence for these former colonies. Now, there's two basic types of dictatorship. There's a dictatorship you can see, touch and taste. Communism, fascism, apartheid. The people under those dictatorships know where they stand. They can see the controllers, they know they're controlled. That kind of control has a finite life because people can see what the situation is. It might take some time, but eventually the desire for freedom in the human heart will, will rebel against that. The greatest form of dictatorship is a dictatorship you can't see, touch and taste, that goes under uh, cover stories like democracy and freedom. And people will sit in one of those dictatorships forever until someone or something points out what the game is. It's in simple terms, symbolic terms, not even symbolic, it's how it is. It's sitting in a prison when you can't see the bars. Where you think that you're free because you can put a cross on an irrelevant piece of paper every four or five years to elect in different masks on the same face to continue the same agenda the last lot did. We're free, honey. That is the greatest form of dictatorship because people do not rebel against not being free when they think they are. And what happened at what we call independence for the former colonies is they moved from a, a, a dictatorship that the colonies could see, rule from Britain or whatever, to a covert dictatorship. What they did, they left the bloodline out there and the secret society network that manipulates the bloodline into power and its agents and gophers into power. And they've gone on controlling those countries ever since, while the people in those countries think they're free and their own government is in control.